Welcome to our first lesson on the real numbers. These are going to be short 10 minute videos that kind of hit the highlights of the chapter. This section is meant to review the real numbers. That should say real numbers, that's a misprint there. It should be a review of the real numbers. And several examples are going to be given, however, what I want to remember that this lesson, nor any of these lessons, are going to be comprehensive. They're just going to be short 10 minute highlights of the chapter. You are still expected to read the sections in the book to get a complete review with full examples. I want to start off with a list of numbers here, negative 2, 1 half, pi, 0, and 1, and we're going to attempt to categorize these in based on what types of numbers they are. First are the natural numbers, and natural numbers are just any positive numbers, and I want to remember that 0 is not a positive number. If I ask for whole numbers, though, that does include 0. So we have 0 and 1. Integers would be the next category. Integers are both positive numbers and negative numbers. So that's going to be negative 2, 0, and 1. Next are the rational numbers. These are numbers that can be written as a fraction. So this is going to include the 1 half and all the integers as well because we can just put them over one and they suddenly become a fraction or a rational number. Irrational numbers are everything that can't be written as a fraction and that only includes the number pi in our example. For the real numbers, real numbers are any type of the, are all these numbers combined into one so that's going to be the whole entire list negative two, one half, pi, zero, and 1. Next thing I want to touch on is graphing a set of numbers. If I wanted to graph the real numbers between negative 1 and 2 inclusive, we're going to have a number line where, ne where there's a line over the points neg negative 1 through 2. And to show inclusive, meaning I can include the numbers negative and 1 and 2, we're going to use a square bracket. And that's different than a problem like this between negative 2 and 3, because now it's not inclusive. And we use curved brackets to show that we don't include negative 2 and 3, but I can get as close as I want. I can be 2.99999 as long as I don't go all the way out to 3. The last thing I want to touch on is problems like this, integers between 0 and 4. Now, integers do not include fractions. So instead, we're going to have just points, and it's not inclusive, so just between 0 and 4, we're going to have points at 1, 2, and 3. Interval notation. This is basically the same idea, we just don't have the graph. So for inclusive between negative 3 and 5, we're going to put the numbers negative 3, comma 5 in those square brackets. Similarly, between 4 and 9, since it's not inclusive, we're going to use curved brackets. If I want to be less than or equal to 3, now there's no minimum value. I can get as small as I want to get, and so we use negative infinity to represent that. We use a square bracket next to the 3 because I can be equal to the 3. If I wanted to be strictly less than, it would be a curved bracket. Operations on fractions. This is going to be a quick review on the operations of fractions. You are going to be expected to know how to deal with fractions without the aid of a calculator. You know, you might remember that to add fractions, we need a common denominator. Inspecting the denominators, 3 and 7, you'll notice the common denominator is 21. So we multiply 3 by 7 and 7 by 3. Doing the same thing to the top and bottom. Now the problem reads... 7 over 21 plus 12 over 21. And you remember with adding fractions, we add the numerators, keep that common denominator, and 19 over 21 is the final answer. Here we have a subtraction problem, works exactly the same as addition. We look at it and find a common denominator. This time, 10 works for a common denominator, so we only have to multiply the 1 half by 5 on the top and bottom and that will give me 5 tenths minus 3 tenths so we subtract the numerators keep the denominator and you end up with 2 tenths now you remember we ha can reduce that top and bottom are divisible by 2 and that gives us 
one fifth. What about multiplication? First thing with all these problems is if you're dealing with fractions, you want all your numbers to be fractions. So we're going to rewrite that 6 as a fraction, 6 over 1. And now with multiplication, you'll remember that we multiply the top numbers and we multiply the bottom numbers. 1 times 6 over 3 times 1, and we'll end up with 6 thirds, which reduces to 2. Division works exactly the same as multiplication with one extra step. With division, we are going to take this very last number, this one-third here, and we are going to flip it upside down. When it flips upside down, it becomes 3 over 1, and now it's a multiplication problem. We multiply straight across on the top and bottom, and we get 9 fourths. Something I want to notice on this problem is you might be inclined to reduce that to a mixed number. In algebra, generally, improper fractions are more convenient than mixed numbers. So we're going to keep it as an improper fraction. If we could reduce it as an improper fraction, we would, but nothing divides 9 and 4 evenly, so we will keep it as 9 fourths for the final answer in this class. Positive and negative numbers is the next topic that you need to know for these first four sections. Um, when we're adding and subtracting numbers that have the same sign, you keep the same sign. So when we've got 1 plus 4, both of them are positive, we keep the same sign and get 5. Same thing, we've got two negatives, negative 3 and negative 6. Keep that same sign, negative, and 3 and 6 makes 9. Same sign, keep the sign. When the signs are different, we look at two things. Ignore, ignoring the positive and negative bit, I ask which is bigger, the positive 9 or the negative 4? Well, the 9 is bigger. How much bigger is 9 than 4? It's 5 bigger. Since no, the positive number is 5 bigger than the other number, my answer is positive Five. Same thing here. We've got a negative and a positive. Here the negative number is bigger. It is also 5 bigger. Since the negative number is 5 bigger, the answer is negative 5. Subtraction problems work exactly the same as addition problems with one extra step. We look in the middle where it's 1 minus negative 3. Look at that minus negative. We're going to change that and add the opposite. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. And now the problem reads 1 plus 3, which we can easily solve to be 4. So with negative numbers, we add, when we're subtracting, I'm sorry, when we're subtracting, we add the opposite. Here we're subtracting a positive 4. So now it becomes adding a negative 4. Add the opposite. Two negatives, keep the negative. 6 and 4 make 10. Multiplication and division, pretty simple. If the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If the signs are different, the answer is negative. 5 times 3, both the same, answer is positive. 5 times 3 is 15. Negative 6 times negative 2. Both the same, 6 times 2 is 12. What about negative 4 divided by 2? Now we've got a positive and a negative, so the answer is going to be negative. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Same thing in this problem, 15 divided by negative 5. Different signs, negative answer. 15 divided by 5 is 3. This has been a very brief quick review over a lot of topics. Remember, it's not a detailed review. You are expected to read the sections in the book, read the examples in sections 1-1 through 1-4, and then work on the assignment on page 79, numbers 1 through 61 odd. And this homework assignment is going to be turned in, like all this week's homework assignments, on Tuesday, October 30th by 3 p.m.